Hey, this is John Petrucci from Dream Theater, and you're watching Guitar TV. I'm really psyched about a dramatic turn of events. Yeah, it just was just released, and uh, it's actually doing really well, which which is great news, uh, not only here in the U.S. but all around the world. Our, our fans really came out in uh, serious force and and are making this album a success, and we're really proud of how it came out and you know I'm psyched to be on tour now and, and starting to play this music live. Well you know it's interesting uh, the way that we tour. We, we do uh, play a lot of shows, we do tour a lot, um, but we also try to make it digestible uh, for, for ourselves. You know we all have families and you, you can't just leave for years at a time. So we do things uh, in legs. So right now we're, we're on a US leg um, that lasts approximately four to five weeks, something like that, it's about 20 shows. And we'll be off for a month after that, and then we'll have a, like a two-week run. Then we'll be off for another month and a half, two months, and then we'll do, uh, you know, a five-week run. So that's the way we kind of run it um, to make sure that we have time off to keep keep everybody insane, keep everybody intact, and at the same time, get the most out of playing live and see as many places and as many countries as we can. And that's why it lasts uh, as long as it does. If we were to do it consecutively, it'd be a lot shorter. As far as uh, when we had the cameras rolling during the audition process, for example, the, the, the crew was really, really great. They were incredible. They were really respectful of our space. And you didn't even know they were there. You, know? you really didn't. Um, it, it, was, it was a type of thing where it turned out exactly the way that we wanted it to, the way that the producer intended it to. Whereas like, it's, it is like you're a fly on the wall, that you're just kind of watching what's going on. And, and you know, we thought it was a really important step for us to take to bring in our audience and our, our fans to see that process, to get to know what we went through, get to know Mike Mangini from the beginning, and kind of just humanize the whole experience and bring everybody in and together. And I, I think that it was very helpful for, for us and for our uh, our audience. My setup is centered around the Mesa Boogie Mark V. That's uh, the head that I am in love with and uh, used all on the new brand new album. That's the, the one head on the album. So of course I have it out with me live. And it, it's a stereo setup so there's two Mark V's and as far as uh, the effects my goal was to keep it as simple as, as I can. You know in the studio um, when I go for a guitar sound, I plug into the amp, the amp goes into a cabinet, and that's it. Live, I'd like to try to get as close to that as possible. So as little as I can do to it, the better. So it has, um, there's a Dunlop rack wah in there. Uh, so there's no pedal going to the front, you know, with all this cable or anything. There's uh, an Axe FX 2 that's in the effects loop, which is a beautiful piece of gear. It's awesome. It is incredibly clean, it's incredibly powerful, and it's doing all the stereo delays, harmonies, chorus, all things like that that sound great in the effects loop. And then I have a switchable pedal board that has stomp boxes on it. So if I want my Van Halen flanger, you know, I, I can turn it on. And, and again, it's not, there's not all these cables running out to a pedal board. Everything is in the rig, in the rack, and you can switch on something when you need it, and when you don't need it, there's nothing going through the, uh, the signal. And that's pretty much it. And there's a pedal board, it's a uh, Axis Electronics pedal board, and that's controlling everything. There's a Wah controller, an Ernie Ball volume pedal, and a tuner, and, and that's it. So it's, it's, you know, in some ways complex the way it runs, but the concept is relatively simple. There's tons of stuff on YouTube. You know, uh, my forum is a great place to go because it's a really rich guitar community. So I, you know, I'm constantly getting turned on to guys. You know, somebody will start talking about, oh, you got to see this guy or, or whatever, or they'll post somebody does a cover of this song, and it's a great way to, to, you know, go to one place and see these different things. Get turned on to it. Then once you go to YouTube, I mean, you know, it's kind of make or break. There's so many great players, of course, and some of these guys, you know, what what makes makes them different, you know. I mean, obviously, if somebody's like super talented, it's going to come across no matter what. It could be some shaky like camera in the back of a club, and you're like impressed. Um, you know, some of the, some of the guys that have stuff that's a, that's just 
simple, I think, comes across well. You know, people that try to like overdo it, I don't know. There's too many things there that are distracting or taking away from what they're doing. Some, sometimes guys would be like, oh, here's my version of this solo, and it's just them and a the guitar, and you're like, oh, man, I hate, the, I hate you. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> so th that, to me, impresses me when it's just kind of stripped down. Um, to me, it's kind of like that's what that, that, uh, that venue is like for. It's like that personal thing. I know people overproduce things and do all the stuff, which is cool, too. It's a, it's, a, it's a whole different level of entertainment and stuff, and I get that part. As far as guitar players just playing on there, just simple. There's a guy with a guitar. Check this out. You know, there's some really great stuff just like that out there. You know what? The online world is a huge part of everybody's lives. Um, as a musician, it's, it's, a great, just, it, it's a great way to kind of not only get information out very quickly, but to, to communicate with everybody and, and bring people together. So yes, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm updating things. Um, I do watch and read and go to different sites and go to forums and try to take everything in. You know, it, I think it's important to, whether you're reading good or bad or seeing something good or bad, to just kind of know what's out there and sort of know what's on people's minds. And, you know, I, I think that it's, it's very important. You know, the world has become like smaller and smaller and it, it's, it's something that you should really be involved in and take advantage of. And, and it's great. And it's great for a band like us and, and guitar players because how else can you bring people together and get information out and get people to come uh, to join you and, and listen to what you're doing if, if you're... You know, if you're not like a pop act that has that kind of thing built in, then the community method is the way. And it used to be word of mouth and tape trading and stuff, and now it's like internet and different things. So it, it's great. It really, really is great. I mean, as far as guitar players and people moving on to, uh, into the future, I like things that are, that are unique and, and that are original. You know, I, the people that have their own voice on the instrument, they, they stand out. I mean, Everybody plays guitar. You know, it's like you can talk to, you can go anywhere in any situation and like, you know, I don't know what the, the stats are. One in five people, play, you know, everybody plays guitar. So um, it, it's that, that uniqueness, that originality. And it doesn't even mean that you have to do something so wacky that everybody's like, oh, wow. But it's just like your voice, you know, finding a voice. Um, I always tell people to write music. You know, that's like my, my biggest thing because... Um, there's a lot of great players, and, and players are becoming great at younger and younger ages, you know, because, because of YouTube and all these things, it's normal. Like, if you see somebody shredding when they're, like, 11, like, that's normal. So, okay, now they're shredding when they're 10, and that's normal. Oh, now they're shredding when they're 8, and that's normal. You know, we're going to have to start to give, like, you know, lessons in the womb or something, you know. Um, so, so it's just like to be at that level of a player is, is just normal now. So people are taking it to, to extreme levels, which is great. But what's going to separate them out, and it's that voice I'm talking about, is, is your uniqueness in, in what you create you know, as a creative person. So I always say, you know, play with people. Don't just sit in your bedroom. Jam, go out there, play with people, and compose. Write music and, and kind of try to get that craft going. Because that's the reason why we love all these bands. It, you know, either whether they're a new band or a classic band, you love the music. You know, and even if it's a guitar player, if you love Joe Satriani, if you love Steve Vai, if you love, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan, it's the music that they're writing. It's not only what they're playing. Like, wow, that's amazing. It's the music. If they were doing amazing stuff and the music stunk, nobody would lis listen to it. So cultivate that compositional creative part you know that's really really important I mean as far as like relating to bringing stuff back into the music or back into my guitar player I mean there's, there's a few things I think you know a, as a lyricist like I'm always looking at what's going on in the world and and kind of filtering that through and interpreting that you know on the new record there's a lot of songs that have to do with dramatic events that are happening now that's where the whole title uh, comes from so just being in touch with what's happening on a global level, I think, is really important. And also on a local level, because 
there's like some just really interesting and beautiful stories that are going on right in your backyard in your neighborhood. Um, as far as guitar playing, you know, I've said this for a while. I, I, I have, uh, I enjoy weightlifting and, and uh, you know, uh, I, I've been doing it for several years now. And, I, and I've always no, noticed a total parallel between like athletics, it doesn't, even, it doesn't have to be weightlifting. Anything that requires like a mindset and a conditioning mentality and, and guitar playing or drumming or whatever, total parallel. So everything that, that you need to do to become a great athlete or whatever, you need to do that to become a great guitar player. You can really transfer those things. Um, you know, weightlifting, it's about technique and form and how you build and it's progression and you have to be strict and you have to be consistent. Same thing on guitar. You know, if you're a gymnast and you're working on routines, those routines are performances uh, and, and you have to get them perfect and you have to break them down to the smallest elements. And if that one element you can't do, you got to figure out why you can't do it. Well, maybe my shoulders aren't strong enough, so I'll do presses. Well, it's the same thing on guitar. Why can't I do that? Well, maybe because this pinky is stink, so I'll work on that. So whatever. Um, so I do see parallels like in, in athletics and music big time. Mm -hmm.